the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin, and I'm reading in the New uh, King James Version, to a virgin betrothed or engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Before we go any further, I want to take a quick pause real quick. And we see here that an angel from the Lord has appeared in Mary's house. What's up, Tiffany? I'm glad you're feeling better. Has appeared in Mary's house. And this angel has told Mary, rejoice. The angel is there. I want to say this, that God knows where you live. Why is that important? It is important because God knows the intimate details and the intimate parts of you. How would it have been if the angel came, thank you, if the angel came to a house and said, greetings, woman of God, you are going to have a son, Mary. And the person that answered back said, my name ain't Mary, my name is Mordecai. <laughs> then, it, but it didn't happen that way. Because God, he knows you. He knows where you are. He knows where your life is. He knows where you are. He knows where you live. Because God knows everything. And I just wanted to tell you that for some people who may feel like, man, God doesn't care about me. God doesn't see me. God doesn't know me. God knows every hair on your head. God knows you. Somebody say, he knows my name. Let's keep going. Verse 29 says, but she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to this angel, she asked, she said, how will this be since I am a virgin? She had to ask. She said, hold up, angel. I don't know how this is supposed to happen, how I'm supposed to have a baby when I've never been with a man. My mom used to make us watch the clumps. And uh, Mama Clump used to say, I've never had relations. <laughs> She's never had relations with a man. She said, how can this be? Mary said, and the angel, verse 35, answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. Her son is John the Baptist. For nothing, say this with me, for nothing will be impossible with God. I need you to say it with a little more excitement. For nothing will be impossible. I like it with God. And Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Today, I want to preach from this, this, this topic, the miracle in you, the miracle in you. Look at somebody real quick and tell them there's a miracle in you. You might have looked at the wrong person because that person was looking at you real crazy. I need you to look at somebody else and say, you know what? Say, neighbor. Come on, preach to them. Say, oh, neighbor. There's a miracle in you. Hey, Amen. That's the last, probably the last time I'm going to make you look at your neighbor because I don't like looking at my neighbor either. But it's okay. It's all right. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for this word. Have your way today in our hearts. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So during this, this holiday season, during this, this Christmas time, everybody loves Christmas, right? During this Christmas time, my family, my wife, and my kids, we love to watch movies. We, uh, we will go downstairs to our living room, and we will uh, get on the couch. We'll turn the fireplace on, and all of us will get under that, that like quilt, and we'll watch movies. Sometimes we even go... 
upstairs to, to our room. And we all get in the bed and we begin to watch movies. What I've realized during this time is that there are a lot of Hallmark movies out. And it's something about those Christmas movies that just get you, get you all in the feels, right? You know, those Christmas movies. My favorite, or one of my favorite Christmas movies uh, is, is Macaulay Culkin is the, what, Home Alone? Is that what, is that what it's called? Home Alone. And the, the, the story of Home Alone is that he found, well, he was lost, or he got, he got left, and his parents found him, and he found his mom on Christmas, right? And they were at the, the church, and, and he, had the, he was crying, and I felt like I was going to cry when he found his mom. What are you doing? The other, the other Christmas story that I love is, is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I don't know if anybody loves that movie. You're looking at me like, that's not a Christmas movie. But it is a little bit because it comes out on Christmas. And what it was was Charlie Bucket, he was a poor little boy, and Willy Wonka did what? He gave him the Chocolate Factory on Christmas. Now, this is another movie. I never watched them all, but I looked it up for you. Third, uh, Miracle on 34th Street. You never seen it, amen. <laughs> miracle on 34th Street. And the miracle was that they had to prove that this man was really who? Santa Claus. Don't y'all know it? You know it. That he was really Santa Claus. Whatever your favorite Christmas movie is, there's always some type of miracle that's found in that movie. A miracle is simply an extremely outstanding or unusual event, a thing, or an accomplishment that cannot be explained. So while this Christmas time of year is happening, all of these movies are full of miracles that can't be explained during this season. But I want to suggest that these movies are true, in a sense. That there was a miracle that happened, the miracle wasn't finding out that Santa Claus was Santa Claus or the Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. The miracle was over 2,000 years ago, God impregnated a virgin. That's the miracle. <laughs> that God impregnated a virgin by the Holy Spirit, and this girl named Mary was able to have a son, and his son was Jesus. What I want to suggest is that God wants to do the same miracle in you. Mm -hmm, you're looking at me, I know. God wants to do the same exact miracle that he did for Mary through you. So now, ladies, I know you, you're looking at me, you said, no, 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 no. I don't need to get pregnant right now. I've had enough. We are done. And fellas, y'all like, yeah, we're finished, son. We're finished. So what I'm not, I'm not talking about getting pregnant with Jesus. But what I'm saying is that Jesus was conceived in Mary. She carried him for nine months. He was formed in Mary, and then she delivered him, meaning the miracle was complete. She delivered Jesus to the world. And since we are in this series of all things being new, when we get saved and become new, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit implants Jesus inside of us. The Bible says that Christ in us is the hope of glory. And Paul declares that Jesus is being formed in us. So if Jesus is being formed in us and he's giving us a new life, I got to start looking like Jesus. I, I, I should be walking like Jesus. I should be talking like Jesus. My mind should be changing. How I think should be changing just a little bit if I'm being formed in his presence. And hopefully I'm delivering Jesus to the world around me. This is the miracle of Christmas. We are in this Christmas time that we should be just like Mary and we should be delivering Jesus to those around me, to the people in my circle, to my family and my friends. We shouldn't be delivering the attitude. We should be delivering Jesus. We shouldn't be delivering gossip. We should be delivering Jesus. We shouldn't be delivering always the one in trouble and they always got to bail us out of jail. We should be the one that's delivering Jesus. So I'm praying that the real miracle of Christmas, that all of these movies are trying to capture, we know what the real miracle is. So I'm talking about the same miracle that happened in Mary is the same miracle that God wants to do in you. And we're going to see it through three points. I'm going to give you my points early so you know when I'm going to finish. 
All right, we ain't going to be here all day. One, God wants to conceive in you a miracle. Two, God wants to wants you to carry the miracle. And then lastly, God wants to complete the miracle through you, or he wants you to deliver the miracle. All right? So let's get started. Y'all ready to work? Here we go. So the conceiving of a miracle, verse 30 says, and the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. We see that this angel has, has, has gotten into Mary's house and he's in the corner. And the first thing this angel is telling Mary is don't be afraid. Well, the first thing I'm going to be is afraid. It's a big angel in my room. So he's telling her, don't be afraid. And she's saying, wow, you know, she she's trying to figure it out. He says, and he uh, and behold, you will conceive a son. He said, Mary, let me go back. Do not be afraid for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall call him Jesus. So this angel has just told Mary why he was there. And he told her that she was going to have a child and that she was going to name him Jesus. And so Mary said to the angel, she asked him a question. How will this be? She said, I've never been with a man. I'm not married yet. I don't know how this is going to happen. She said, I am a virgin. Then verse 35, the angel answered her and said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High is going to overshadow you and he's going to get you pregnant. He's going to get you pregnant by the Holy Spirit, and this is going to be the Son of God, and this baby is going to be holy. Somebody say holy. She so said, for nothing, this is the word, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, this is a great thing, behold, I'm the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed. How, how are you feeling if an angel comes into your room and tells you something that's never happened before, and you're like, wait a minute, I don't, I don't know. The angel said, you're about to get pregnant, and it ain't about to be by your fiance. And you're like, wait a minute, he's going to have some questions, and I've got some questions too. She said, how can this happen? And the angel told her, but Mary settled in her mind. She said, let it be. How many of us, when God is telling us to do something big, can simply say, Father, just let it be. Whatever you want to do. No, many of us, when God is telling us to do something, we're not saying let it be. We're like, hold up, God. I, I don't know if I'm ready. And Mary said, she said, let it be. So here's the question. Here's the question. Do you need a miracle this Christmas? Look at somebody. Ask them, do you need a miracle this Christmas? You ain't asked the right person. You got to ask the right one. Do you need a miracle this Christmas? Maybe you need a miracle in your family. Maybe you need a miracle in your finance. Maybe you need a miracle at your job because your boss is getting on your last nerve. Maybe you need a miracle with your kids so they can sit down and be quiet. Hallelujah. Maybe you need all the kids. All y'all kids should have been the renewal kids anyway. Amen. Maybe you need a miracle in your body. Maybe your body is sick and you need a miracle. Well, we all need a miracle. And if you cannot think or don't know what miracle you need right now, I promise you that we've all been in a place where we've needed a miracle before. The key, though, to conceiving the miracle is we have to say what Mary said, and we have to say, let it be. Somebody say it. Say, let it be. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that she was going to have a child, Mary had some questions. She said, how is this even possible? I've never been with a man. Here's the thing about God. God does not mind your questions. God does not mind that you have some questions when, there's a, when you need a miracle. You may have gotten a bad doctor's report. And the report is coming back with the, the big C letter word, cancer. You're going to ask some questions. God, how is this going to happen? How am I going to be healed? You may have been struggling in your marriage, and it's been me before. And you've heard the word, the D word in your marriage, divorce. And you're asking God, God, how are we going to get out of this? God does not mind your questions. Here's the answer. But just like the angel replied to Mary, he said, with God, nothing is impossible. 
So when you ask the question, how is it going to happen? I see. When you ask the question, how is it going to happen? God's going to reply with God, with me. There is nothing that's impossible. No question that you can ask God. He will always give you a reply because in God, he will make all things new. And there is nothing impossible. I want to impart faith in you right now that even though you don't know how it may turn out, even though you may be going through a situation in your life right now where you need God to work it out on your behalf, I'm looking at you and I'm saying with God, nothing is impossible. Whatever it is that you need, you need a miracle. You need God to work something out over your life. You got to lift up in faith and say with God, nothing is impossible. And when you believe that, that's how God will begin to conceive a miracle in you. We have to give up trying to figure it out. And we have to say like Mary, let it, yes. For you have to conceive a miracle, you have to say let it be. Let the word of the Lord come to pass. You've got to say I believe. But many times we go through situations that test our faith. My wife and I. It's been now about four, almost four and a half years. We had our first child, Ethan, and it seemed like that, that, um, that pregnancy was real easy. It seemed like everything just kind of worked out. Ethan, well, she was pregnant. We had the gender reveal. It was a boy. Next thing, we're there, and he's here. Hallelujah. He's there. But the second baby, uh, I came home one day, and my wife told me she was pregnant. I was super excited, y'all. And this baby, we were, we were going back and forth to the doctor, and, the, and it was good. Everything was working out. All things were good. I was recording it. I was going to make a little documentary. You know, I love doing all that drama stuff, you know, online, and I could do that. But one day, she wasn't feeling well, and she went to the doctor, and the doctor said that there was no heartbeat. That was devastating. And I can, I can imagine, you know, how my wife felt, but I know how I felt as well. I'm like asking questions. God, how can this be? You know, you start asking questions like, was it me? Did I do something? Was it, was it something that I did? And we had to get to the place where we had to believe God again. So we tried again. But this pregnancy seemed like it was just everything was happening. We would go to the doctor. And every time we went to the doctor, they were saying it's, it's something. They were saying, you got a placenta previa or something it was where they were saying, if you deliver the baby, that your wife could bleed out. I'm like, what in the world? And then we went back again. They said, well, I don't know. It looks like the baby has Down syndrome. We don't, we don't know what's going to happen. So I'm, I'm like, okay, God, wait a minute. What is going on? And so it seemed like every time we went to the doctor, it was always something else. We had to get in ourselves that with God, nothing was impossible. And we had to begin to believe God. We prayed. I remember my dad went with us that one time to, to the doctor. We just began to pray, and we began to believe. And, and the months went by. And we had our son, and that's Caleb. And he is the most energetic little boy that you can ever imagine. What I got out of that was I had to get to a place. We both had to get to a place where we had to simply tell God, God, whatever your will is, let it be. Because we can't figure it out. We don't know what's happening. The doctor keeps giving us news after news. And we had to give it to God to tell him that with him, all things were possible. Hear me. When God wants to work a miracle, the first thing needed to conceive the miracle is you putting your total trust in God. Mary did not doubt when the angel told her she was going to have the savior of this world. She simply said, let it be. Let your will be done in me and through me. For you to conceive a miracle, you've got to give God the let it be according to your word. And God's words, here it is, you cannot be afraid to tell God let it be. Because his words and his plans for you are good. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. I'm telling you right now, you can tell God, let it be, because when he lets it be, it's his plan and his will for you and his plans for you are good. Somebody say it's good. He's not going to harm you. His plans are always there to keep you. So when you put your life in the hands of God, God's plans are good. You can trust God. Somebody say, God, I trust you. God, I trust you. And I will let it be. I want you to say this last thing to your neighbor. I promise you, 
I'm not going to tell you to talk to your neighbor again. But this next thing that I'm going to tell you to tell your neighbor, you might think is weird. But I want you to tell your neighbor, look, find somebody and tell them God wants to get you pregnant. <laughs> she said, I ain't saying it to you. I ain't saying it to you. God wants to get you pregnant. He wants all of us to be pregnant with a miracle. All right. So now we're going to talk about the carrying of a miracle. I see, I see all over there like, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't want to say that right now. The Bible says in verse 39, now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? This is Elizabeth talking to Mary, telling her that she's pregnant with her Lord. The only way that that was revealed is because Elizabeth now had the Holy Ghost. She had the Holy Spirit and his spirit revealed to her that Mary was carrying uh, the son of God. Verse 44, for indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment or a completion of those things which were told to her from the Lord. And Mary says, uh, uh, my soul magnifies the Lord. So here it is. How do you carry a miracle? You get around other miracle carriers. How do you carry a miracle. You got to get around other people who are miracle carriers. You got to get around other people who are speaking faith. You got to get around other people who mean you well. What would have happened if Mary would have got around some people who were doubters? And they like, and she's about what, six months pregnant. And they're like, Mary, how, how'd you get pregnant? She was like, well, the Holy Spirit got me pregnant. And the, her friend would be like, oh, okay, well, yeah, my cousin and her boyfriend, the Holy Spirit got her pregnant too. That, that, that's how it happened. No, you got to get around people who are going to up your faith. When you, are, when you are carrying a miracle, you've got to get with people who have like-minded faith, other miracle, miracle carriers. Here's the thing. When you are carrying a miracle, proximity matters. Woo. When you are carrying a miracle, who you are close to matters because you have to be careful about the people you get close to when you are carrying a miracle because that person can lit literally make your baby leap. What is what are we saying? Like first lady said last week, you got to check your circle. That that person that you're with, they can either kill your faith or they can either make your faith leap. I don't know about you, but in this season, I'm trying to be around people who make my faith leap. I don't have time for people who are trying to kill my faith. I got to even look down my row real quick and make sure I'm sitting beside uh, somebody who has faith, a miracle carrier. Look at some, Don't look at him. Just say, are you a miracle carrier? Look forward. Are you a miracle carrier? <laughs> they can excite your faith in you or they can kill your faith. It's what I realize. It's what I understand. Ladies who are pregnant. They walk different. Ladies who are pregnant, they, they sit a little bit different. Ladies who are pregnant, I don't know why they do this, but they always rubbing their belly. You know, they're walking around. I could tell, I could tell a pregnant woman in Walmart because she's walking around with the cart and just kind of, you know, rubbing them. When you are pregnant, you are just different. And you have to put yourself in environments that cultivate faith when you are pregnant. When you, when you are pregnant with a miracle, you have to do that. Mary had to get around other miracle carriers. Then is what the Bible says that she had to magnify the Lord. The next couple of verses down, Mary says, oh, magnify the Lord. Here it is. A magnifying glass doesn't make things bigger. Uh, for all those who have used the magnifying glass, the magnifying glass doesn't physically make an item bigger. It makes the item appear bigger. You have, to, you have to magnify the Lord. 
when you are carrying a miracle, the enemy oftentimes wants you to magnify your problems. The enemy oftentimes wants you to magnify the bad. He wants you to magnify the negative. He wants you to meditate on what's bad. What, what we're saying is when you are carrying a miracle, when you are believing God for something, when you are walking in faith, you've got to magnify God. You've got to, how do you do it? You've got to worship God. Even when things don't look right, you've got to bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. I have to magnify God. When you have a negative report from the doctor, you've got to magnify God and not magnify that report. If you meditate on the negative, it will always appear larger. But you have to magnify and you have to meditate on the word of God and it will appear larger to you. Mary got around someone who was carrying a miracle and she magnified the Lord. So Christ was formed in her. When you magnify the Lord, God will continue to form in you a miracle. Galatians 4 19 says, my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. As she was carrying the miracle, the miracle was being formed in her until it was complete and it was time to deliver the miracle. Here's the last point, the completion of the miracle. We go to Luke, the second chapter, in the sixth verse, and it says, while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. Here is something. Sometimes the miracle doesn't turn out exactly how you thought it would. Later in the second chapter, Mary and Joseph, they were in the temple. And the Bible says that a prophet named Simeon came up to them. This was an old man. And he, he, he believed that God would not let him die until he saw Jesus or saw the Messiah. And so this man comes to Mary, Simeon, the prophet, and he says these words. He says, yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. What a word to give a new mother. She had just delivered the Messiah, and yet the prophet says a sword is going to pierce your soul. In other words, Mary, everything doesn't always turn out how you thought, but it's still a miracle. Maybe it may take a year. Maybe it may take two years. Maybe it may take some hardship and some, some situations. Everything may not always turn out how you thought, but it's still a miracle. The reason I'm saying that is because we think a miracle is supposed to turn out one way, and it's still a miracle, but it may not always turn out exactly how you thought it would. Mary conceived, Mary carried, and she birthed a miracle. But who would have imagined 33 years later, she will be looking at this miracle, hanging on the cross, dying for the sins of the world. So the miracle might be complete in us. It may just be a little different than how you thought it was supposed to be. And Mary, though she delivered the miracle, it may not have felt good, but it met its purpose. Her miracle met its purpose. But here's the good news. Somebody say, here's the good news. Since God has conceived the miracle in you, he will complete it. Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you, hallelujah, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. If God began the work in you, it is up to him to complete it. If God has begun anything in you, he is going to complete it. Whatever you have been dealing with, God is saying the miracle I'm going to complete in you. So here's the word. God wants to do in you what he did in Mary. He wants to conceive his son in you. He wants you to carry his son, and he wants you to deliver his son to the world. Maybe, maybe you're saying, I don't know how I'm going to deliver Jesus to the world because I'm not like Mary. I'm not pure. And what I'm, I'm not talking about uh, relational pure or knowing a man or having sex or anything. I'm not talking about that. But you may think that what's, what happened in your life disqualifies you from being able to carry Jesus, being able to carry this miracle. But I want to tell you this, that there was a scripture that I read, and when I first read it, it made me feel some type of way just a little bit. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, it says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? 
And after that verse, I looked down a few more verses and it began to list out all the things that the unrighteous have done. And unfortunately, when I looked at the list, I found out that I made the list, y'all. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, God, I made the list. You're saying the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. But I looked down two more verses. Verse 11 says, and such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of God. I don't care what you did. When you believe in Jesus, he says you are now washed clean so that you can carry and you can deliver Jesus to the world. He now makes you pure again. I don't care what you did. The enemy wants to bring condemnation to you and he wants you to believe that God can't use you. But I'm telling you today that God can use you and he wants to use you and he wants you to be just like Mary and to deliver Jesus to the world. So we don't make it because of anything we've done. We make it because the blood of Jesus makes us pure. We don't make it because of our good works, because our good works are like filthy rags. We make it because the blood of the son Jesus, he went to the cross and he died so that he will blot out our sins. What is blot out? It's like putting something on paper and putting ink on top of it. You can't even see through it if you put it to the light. The Lord is saying he has, he has made you pure. Bible says chaste, almost like a virgin. Well, not almost like a virgin. And I believe I have it. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2 and 10 says, for I feel, and this is Paul talking, for I feel divine jealousy for you. Since I betrothed you or engaged you to one husband, which is Christ, to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. Here's the good news. The blood of Jesus has made you pure. And this is the message. This is the message. For this season, for this Christmas time, for, for the time that we're living in, is that the miracle is in you. That the miracle that God did over 2,000 years ago is in you. And God wants you to conceive a miracle. He wants you to carry the miracle. And he wants you to deliver that miracle to the world, which is Jesus. But I also want you to know that if you are in need of a miracle, that the same God who worked that miracle out all those years ago is working a miracle in you. 2,000 years ago, a virgin conceived and bore Jesus. And Jesus bore our sins on the cross so that we could be forgiven and made pure. The miracle in you. Can we stand on our feet? Hallelujah. If you believe that, come on, just clap your hands. If you believe that God is birthing a miracle in you, Real quick, let's just lift our hands to the Lord and begin just to say these words. Say, Holy Spirit, reveal to me what you want to do through me. Hallelujah. Father, reveal in us what this word means for us in our lives, in our time. God, reveal in us how you want to birth a miracle in us. Father, you get the glory.